Hello, I'm Levi. Um, I just wanted to do an impromptu video about uh, the awesome mouse. Um, just to kind of show what I've been working on. This won't be scripted or put together in any particular way. Uh, but I've been working on some target testing and refining some bits of it. And I've gotten to a point where I'm interested in handing off my work to uh, mechanicals to see if they can pull together a little bit more, do different flexure designs, um, different knobs, and basically make this target work with everything else. So I'm here to share my findings and explore what I've meant to explore the sensitivities and all that stuff. I got graphs. It'll be a presentation time. Um, for background, if you haven't seen uh, what the awesome mouse is, the awesome mouse is a 3D mouse, so used for CAD, manipulating objects around. Um, really, really useful tool. And the big thing about these is they're normally, they start at $150. Uh, good ones are like $400. There's one company, uh, 3D Connection, that pretty much dominate this market. And so for years I've been paying attention to which open source 3D mice show a lot of potential. And I came across this one and it, Colton did a fantastic job of uh, minimization in terms of bringing down what the mouse requires using really simple mechanisms, PCBs that are easy to manufacture. So hopefully the price point of this mouse can get dropped a lot. It's the open source 3D mouse it's the most potential that I've seen in an open source 3D mouse project. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done um, with refinements and software integration and all, all kinds of different things. But I'm impressed with the direction this is going, so I've been working on refining some bits of it where I can. Uh, more background. Uh, the Awesome Mouse has three repos, a hardware, a firmware, and a software. Um we're not really going to go into this in that in this video. What I'm primarily going to go over is some testing that I've been doing to figure out what target is best. This thread all starts on uh, alternate inductor plane material. So this issue was raised. The original inductor element that was used for the awesome mouse is a dime. Um, this works pretty well we'll get into where testing comes in it's it's definitely the best generic object that you could pull out and use as an inductive target uh colton did a really good job selecting it but it does make it difficult for people out the outside of the united states or even in the united states if you're a mostly cashless person and don't run across them very often to construct the mouse and have a reliable and repeatable inductive interface for the 3d positioning um, so I set out to do some investigation into what made a good target and figure out what, what, a, what a good target would be. To do that, I started uh, by going to a hardware store and buying a bunch of different test targets. Um, what I was primarily looking for is high conductivity metals. Um, inductive properties benefit from having the conductivity of the metal that they're going against uh be really high and especially surface conductivity um one of the reasons why i suspect the dime isn't as good as it could be despite having its copper core is because of the nickel plating on the outside uh so anyway at the hardware store uh, one of the most promising targets that i found were these guys which are copper rivets uh they have a really easy to integrate mechanical shape and so i was really hopeful that they would perform well they did okay, but the custom target was a lot better. Um, then the other thing that I wanted to investigate, my experience was the mount with the mouse. I had a lot of interaxis crosstalk, so like going exactly to the right or exactly to the left because the kinematics of the Stewart platform solve it. It's messy because you're dealing with little inductive coils, and so going back to the picture of the mouse, um, it's a bunch of inductive coils on a PCB and then the targets sit above that. And so there's a lot of potential for non-linearities in the inductive capture system to cause issues uh, with localizing the position of the knob. And so one of the things that I want to investigate is what would a ball bearing or a spherical target do? Unfortunately, when I got into it, they don't have near, nearly high enough sensitivity and I wasn't able to locate a copper sphere. So that track is kind of abandoned, but someone else could pick it up if they wanted to. Um, 
to test the targets, the main thing that I was testing, I had two primary test nodes. This is my test rig. Um, and this is just an old pair of calipers uh, that's set up so that I can place it against the target. And there's a target mounted on the end of that little standoff. Zero the calipers, and then I would take it up to about 40 millimeters. Uh, zero out the awesome mouse so that all the inductive stuff was pretty much at zero. Um, there's also minor firmware modification. I'll get to that on the capture side and all the code for that. And then slowly lower and raise the inductive target from the coils and use just an Arduino micro with a little script on it uh, to feed over to the serial port and then a Python script to pull all that together and figure out what the relationship of distance versus LDC strength was. From that process, uh, let's jump back to firmware modifications. Yeah, from that process, I basically just when the mouse is sending gamepad reports, instead of sending a full gamepad report, I'm capturing uh, some zeroed but otherwise raw channel information from those two LDC coils and then proceeding forward from there. What I found was that the uh, primarily it's, it's a pretty non-linear sensor. So there's a couple different testing regions and let's go to one that we can actually explore. So to get to an explorable graph, if you, in this LDC, this OSM3 target testing repo, I'll link it in the description, um, data capture, and then test runs to keep, and then any of these HTML files are explorable. The dist versus LDC ones, you do have to download it first. And then you can open it um, and then it's it's a plotly file so you can explore around it as you would any other plotly file and highlight over the text and see what is going on within this exact data capture um the big thing that we can notice about this sensing element is it's pretty short range uh, it really doesn't detect uh, even the best target starts to show up at about 10 millimeters distance from it and then it's a logarithmic increase in signal strength as you get closer. There is some linearity reasons to it. I haven't done a characteristic equation yet. Um, that'll probably be some next steps, future research. But it's definitely not a linear relationship. And so I think this non-linearity in the uh, distance of the target to the sensor is what's causing a lot of problems in the Stuart platform solve and a lot of access enter talk. Um, maybe it can be linearized, but that's for future investigations. Um, so heading back to the targets are nonlinear. The other thing that I wanted to compare is like what, what makes the best target. And so one of the analysis that I did was basically the size of the target versus the strength at a fixed distance. I chose the distance of three millimeters because that seemed to be a pretty good general purpose operating distance for most of the targets. Um, and as we can see in these upper distribution groups, um, well, so the two test modes that I did was single sensor where it's just where I basically, I, I center the target above one LDC sensor and try to not have it interfere with anything else and then do the test sequence of moving it up and down and dual sensor uh, for the dual sensor ones i sum together the readings for both sensors uh, and that's just because a lot of the targets due to their shape they were really difficult to get a equal value on both sensors um and so summing them helped in, instead of averaging them I thought gave a more representative behavior. Um, but also they're getting uh, their performance knocked down a little bit because as the teeny amount that they're off center causes 
uh, a lot of problems because if they're off center into the point where they're in the logarithmic decay, decay of one sensor uh, and not quite in the exponential region of the other sensor, then their score overall is lowered a lot. So take the dual sensors with a little bit of a grain of salt, but uh, as we can see from both of these, uh, the dime due to its size and its its strength for its size is an excellent target uh, probably the best general purpose target that could be selected but uh, the custom target which I'll get to how I thought about how to design that in a second did outperform the dime by a pretty significant amount I think it's primarily because of its shape in that it's able to cover both targets and so it scores a lot better in the dual target test re regime and then its surface it is just a raw piece of copper that I got send cut send basically got send cut send to make for me um it just looks like a little bean uh, and so and, and this because the because skin currents are such a large factor in inductive systems having the skin of it be copper instead of nickel i think is partly what gets it the slightly better single performance uh test rig um just putting together the breadboard of how to capture the stuff from the calipers some of the tests with the rivets um i go over the repository structure in this readme uh and then through and then the process to design an optimum an optimum target these were pretty cheap i guess i gotta fix that image in the readme now but for 30 of them, they were about $30 for send, from send, cut, send. Um, so hopefully other people can replicate this pretty easily. Uh, and then once I got them from send, cut, send, I went through a testing regime with them. Um, the big thing to note about them is they have about double the sensitivity of a dime and dramatically outperform all the other targets. And so... I'm looking at these at a recommended operating region of uh, when it's closest to the board about 2.5 millimeters and then for or when it's closest to the board about 0 0.7 millimeters 2.5 nominal 4.8 maximum um, this keeps it within not a totally linear but a fairly linear operation regime for the LDC value over that range um, and it allows it to localize it pretty well so that's that's the main repo um if you want to re re recreate any of this uh that'd be great let me see how i designed the target i have fusion 360 as well so the design of this target is essentially i want to cover the uh cover the little inductive circles as best i can while still allowing space for it to move left and right and up and down and basically not interfere with anything so this design focuses on basically being the being slightly less than the diameter of the inductive coils that are on the pcb and positioned so that it fits within the curvature of the whole design i'm i haven't gotten to testing an actual knob with these on here i'm working on some other flexure stuff with spring-based flexure instead of plastic-based flexures but that's uh not to a finished state yet um but once i get that to a finished state then we'll design a knob with uh these targets and see how it feels uh just qualitatively um hopefully some future research i can get to it or maybe someone else can get to it of mounting an actual imu onto the knob and then trying to correlate the angle that that system reads to what the mouse is outputting and i think that would be an interesting research study uh, i encourage you to check out the awesome mouse project um all of its report repos are open source you can build one yourself I'm in the process of getting a batch of them together, so I might sell those at some point, but this is just a in, pretty much an internal video for people who are working on the project. Um, I think that's all I want to go over, so have a good day.